One day when I was walking in a foreign country, I saw someone walking the other way towards me. As he came closer to me, I noticed that he was consumed with fear. He had a spirit of fear. And without thinking anything about it, I ran across to him and put my hand on his head and cast that spirit out of him. I said to that spirit, you spirit of fear, come out of him now, in Jesus' name. And the spirit of fear came out, and he gave a loud shudder and a jolt and a scream, and the spirit came out of him, and he went with me for some time, and was completely free, and thanked me effusely. You see, this was just a stranger, reacting to the situation. I delivered him of a spirit of fear. Now a spirit of fear can possess you. It can make you panic. It's what um, they call phobias in psychology. I had a lady who was a successful business lady who came to me for help. Um, she had to travel internationally every two weeks. And she couldn't walk down the street without holding on to the wall. And she couldn't go into crowded restaurants. And this greatly affected her ability as a CEO, a director of her company. And uh, she had tried everything. She had tried all sorts of psychological tricks and things. Anyway, I told her, this is a, just a spirit of fear. And I cast the spirit of fear out of her. And she never had those problems again. She came back after some weeks and thanked me effusely for having done this for her. Uh, she was totally set free. It doesn't matter what phobia you have. We call it a spirit of fear. The Bible calls it a spirit of fear. And it tells us uh, that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. So then who has given us the spirit of fear? Well, it's obvious it comes from the other side, the dark side, the Darth Vader side, the, the, the evil side. Fear comes from the devil. He is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses the brethren day and night before God, always trying to find some fault in the, the children of light. He is the condemner. He accuses and condemns, but Bible says we've been given no condemnation from Christ, none at all. So the condemnation that we feel comes from the evil one. And when the evil one is around, you can feel quite a lot of condemnation and a lot of fear. And it's unreasonable fear. It comes whether or not you're secure or under threat, because it is a spirit of fear. It is not fear based upon certain facts. Facts might be there or they may not. Anxiety comes uh, as an unreasonable fear, not based upon any particular fact. All these things can be cast out. Even you can cast them out from yourself. The Bible tells you to cast your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you. Now, cares are worries and anxieties, and it says, cast them on the Lord, for he cares for you. In other words, don't take upon yourself the worries. Jesus said, what can worrying do to you? Can you make you grow? No. Can it change anything? No. Therefore, he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will have its own problems and its own answers. Don't get worried about things that you have no control over, this is easier said than done to those who have, of us who are professional warriors who <laughs> just can't stop worrying. But God tells us, cast your cares. The Word of God tells us, cast your cares upon the Lord, for He cares for you. Now, casting requires some energy, and also casting, uh, you shouldn't take it back again. If the, if the same grievance, the same problem comes back to your mind, then uh, you have to cast it again. It's now another problem, and you need to cast it on the Lord. Amen. 
These things are important things. We have been told what to do. They are weapons. They are weapons that we can use and against the ploys of the enemy. The spirit of fear is a spirit that comes from hell, not from heaven. The fear of God is something else. The fear of God is, is respect and awe for that which is good, and that which is righteous, and that which is pure, and that which brings life. But fear brings death, death to your hopes, death to your mind, and death eventually to your body. Fear is a consuming uh, uh, emotion the world over. It's what Adam and Eve felt uh, 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 right at the beginning after they sinned. They felt fear and then shame. And those two aspects of life stalk us all the time, are constantly trying to overtake us and, and, and get a hold of our lives. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of not being accepted in society or by your family or by a lover or something. All sorts of fears. Fears of wide open spaces, fears of small spaces, fears of sharp instruments, all sorts of fears. All of these come from one source and can be dealt with the same way. A spirit needs to be cast out. Now when you're possessed, often you can't do that yourself, but if you're just oppressed and, uh, and being stalked by the evil one, then you can deal with him yourself. You can cast him out and tear him down in your life. The Bible says that Jesus said when a strong man comes, he throws down the person who is uh, holding the house. He casts the weaker one down, and a stronger one is God, and he lives in us. We have been given weapons to fight with, weapons of warfare, weapons that enable us to fight the good fight of faith. We're fighting to stay in faith. We're fighting to stay um, believing what God has done for us. The devil is fights to make us not believe what he's done for us. Now, the Bible tells us that he set us free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That he's opened the eyes of the blind, and he's op let the prisoner free, and uh, so we're free. But we might be convinced by the evil one that we're not. Now, a spirit of fear may convince you that you're not free. You're bound. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do the other. You see? And you have to speak to it. You have to tell it. Hey, Mr. Devil, I'm not bound. The Bible says I'm set free. And I, therefore I rebuke you. I will not accept what you're saying to me, you spirit of fear. I will not accept that I am bound. You see? Now your mind tells you these things, and the Bible tells us to renew our minds. Okay, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Be renewed by the transforming of your minds. The Bible also tells us that we are new creations. All things have passed away, and we must believe that. See, well, they always try to come back, but they have passed away. All things have become new. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Very important. Okay, because we have to believe what God says, sometimes it feels like what he says is not true. But we have to believe what God says is true. We have been given these sure promises from God that bring us life and godliness and will give us life more abundantly. These are the sure promises of God. And we, if we believe them, can defeat every doubt of the evil one. Now, the shield of faith, which is one of the weapons that we use against the enemy, is like a force shield all around us. And you can, by your faith, destroy the enemy's hold on your life. No need to get someone to pray for you. No need to get anything. Just break the enemy by the faith shield that you have. Even that enemy may be a disease. Just break it in Jesus' name. And praise God, you'll get the promises 
in manifestation as well as in spirit and truth. God bless you.